older and you, you kind of had children and they go the same thing. And then, and then you, you, you get even older and then your body starts to go and you start getting pains and it's more difficult. And then you've got lots of health problems, stuff like that. And, and then you die, <laughs> you know. And, and if you've pleased some guy with a beard or whatever then you go to a nice place when you die, and if you haven't, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> And you look at it, and people don't live overwhelmingly. They exist. They stay alive between point A and point Z. And this is life. I think we can do better than that. The reason that's what life has become is because we have become people who have, uh, who live not a life, but a program, a computer program that follows uh, the program through what we call life. And instead of living life, we let life live us, the program live us and the program is working all the time to keep us in a hypnotic state because that's as I'll come to is basically where most people are at in a hypnotic state and it's 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 incessant tick tock you are feeling sleepy you have no power you must serve the system it's a mind game it has to be a mind game because there's not enough manipulators to physically control the population, so they have to do it through mind, through perception. And through that, by the way, get the population to police each other. They put us in prisons of the mind, where we, we instead of expanding out to all possibility, we have these belief systems, which are nothing more than programs, computer programs, Religion, politics, race, self-identity. We are all that is, has uh, ever been, will ever be. And yet once you take on a religion, that goes zoom. Or oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I follow Judaism, and I'm Hindu. <laughs> Boom! Rules, regulations. You can't say that. You're not a Hindu if you say that. You're not a Christian if you say that. Oh, sorry. Oh. And then there's politics. Oh, you're not a Republican. Oh. You're not a Republican if you say that. You're not a Democrat. You're not this. You're not that. Oh. Oh, I'm a, I'm a black person. I'm a Jewish person. I'm an Arab person. I'm a middle class Englishman. That's who I am. It's my race. Boom. What is, what is, what is, what is, what is identifying? Not, you know, experiencing being in a race and ex enjoying it and all that stuff. I like being an Australian and all that stuff. No problem with that. As long as you realize it's an experience. Once you identify with being the race, you are identifying with being the body, which means you're identifying with being Charlie Smith and Ethel Jones. Gotcha. Which brings us to self-identity, which is the key one. Stop them understanding who they really are, because then we're right up the swanee. As Mark Twain said, in religion and politics, people's beliefs and convictions are in almost every case gotten at second hand. And without examination from authorities who have not themselves examined the questions at issue, but have taken them at second hand from other non-examiners whose opinions about them were not worth a brass farthing. That's how belief systems come about. The earth's not round, you're mad. By the way, if, 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 if there are people here, I'm sure there must be, who never heard my stuff before, all the very best. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to go into some very strange places <laughs> before this day is out. <laughs> He's just said the Queen's a lizard. He cunted on, he couldn't have said that. He did, he did. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, this is a great way that we're held in belief systems. Cognitive dissonance. I love this one. It's really, really uh, uh, important. Lying to yourself. Cognitive dissonance, for people who haven't come across it, is a, a, a state of anxiety. I've seen people in it. State of anxiety um, when their belief system and their experience or what they're hearing in terms of information are at odds. Now, cognitive dissonance is a very good thing because when you go into this anxiety state, you can look at the information and look at the experience, realize there's more to know about your belief system, and you move on. But what most people do is the belief system's immovable, not to be touched. So what they then do is um, try to find ways to explain away the uh, uh, experience or the new information so the belief system remains intact. And th it's from cognitive dissonance that we get these incredible mind contradictions. For instance, we're going to war to fight for peace. <laughs> cognitive dissonance, classic. And uh, George Orwell talked in his book 1984 about doublethink, which again is a, a form of cognitive dissonance to, to square the circle. Double think means the power of holding two contradictory beliefs in one's mind simultaneously and accepting both of them. Fighting for peace. And that's where this comes from. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. And only by persuading us to take on these contradictions and accept them as real can the few control the many. And the idea, and my goodness me, they've got so many people in this world, in this state, the idea is to keep us in a total and constant state of confusion. Thinking the world is sane when it's utterly crazy. Like doctors destroying health, when you realize what the game is, when you've connected enough dots... That is not a contradiction at all anymore. It's only a contradiction when you don't know what the game is. Doctors destroy health because it's about wealth, not health. Pharmaceutical companies are not there to bring um, health to the population. They're there to scam them on one level for vast amounts of money. They're not interested in curing people of cancer. They're making too much money uh, treating the symptoms in this assisted suicide we call chemotherapy. And also to so drug the population in various and many ways that again, our ability to think straight and sharply um, is uh, destroyed. This guy, William Osler, Canadian physician, he said one of the first duties of the physician is to educate the masses not to take medicine. I like him. I like him. I don't know why he said it, but it's true. <laughs> Lawyers destroy justice. Of course they do. Because if we live in a just and fair society in which everyone is treated the same, the few do not have the privileges through law to stitch up the population and the system in general. So, of course, lawyers are there to destroy justice. Universities destroy knowledge. Again, of course, the last thing you want, if you're the few and you want to control the many, is a sharp-thinking, intelligent, aware population. Worst bloody nightmare. So right the way through, from what we call uh, the education system, people are not educated, they are indoctrinated with a version of life and reality and the world that suits the system to keep the few in servitude. And I feel for young people today because they are being bombarded, especially at this time of awakening, and that's no coincidence either, they're being bombarded on multi-levels to keep them asleep and to keep them from opening them, their minds to see 
the full magnitude of who, who they are. And all around the world, education is celebrated. Oh, yes, we're bringing it, education to the third world. If only just more indoctrination into the same global system that we're all supposed to worship. Governments destroy freedom. This is the great one. If, you know, if people are new to this, this is the big, first big step. Governments are not there to serve the people. Governments are there to serve those that control the governments and enslave the people. That's what they're there for. Once we realize that, then a lot of dots start to connect. Men in dark suits. They, they're, they're everywhere, these people. They breed. It's like luminous jackets. They're everywhere. Men in dark suits. Front men for a force that I'll get into who are running the system on behalf of those that control the system. And not for the people, which is why the decisions are against the interests of the people. It's real simple once you know what's going on. And they come from... <laughs> And they come from certain interbreeding bloodlines. You know, this guy is um, uh, one of them. Shows what interbreeding too closely can do for you, really. Oh, Georgie. Boy, Georgie. And it just really is a, a confirmation of just how ludicrous this system's become and just how much control the people have, uh, 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 do, do not have, 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 have lost, that a complete idiot can become president of the United States in the way that this man did. It says so much. You can see it down the back here at a news conference. He's got the wire, you know. Mr. President, could you uh, answer a question? Okay, go ahead. Yeah? Our enemies are innovative and resourceful, and so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people. And neither do we. <laughs> President of the United States, the so-called most powerful country in the world, and that man can become leader. And now, and now the power of persuasion a man who was spawned from the most corrupt political system in America, Chicago, has become the Messiah for the world in the minds of so many people. When the guy is just the political equivalent of a used car salesman, come in here to sell an agenda with a smile on his face. And while we stand by and allow this to happen, our freedoms and freedom of speech is being taken away. Our ability to uh, even interact with these people is being, uh, being eradicated as we have the free speech zones and all this stuff. And an agenda to enslave humanity in the next few years in uh, terms of its... Uh, the, the, the direction it wants to go in terms of its full-scale control unfolds all the time. And these people are fundamentally responsible. Major media destroy information.